Okay, incredible topic, incredible. Uh, light. You know, after a while, it's no longer a topic. It's no longer sub. It's no longer an object to be studied. As we speak, we are the subject. So when we speak, we are speaking from being. Not from becoming or Julius, you're breaking up quite a lot, so sorry. Julius, we can't hear you at all right now. Yes. Your audio is breaking. My audio is breaking. Okay. okay. Now, now it's okay again. Now it's okay. Now it's okay? Yep. Okay, let me know if it happens again. I'll go off screen. Okay. All right. Um... Multi-dimensional beings, being, the name is there. Multi-dimensional being, being multi-dimensional. So we are in an awakening process now. Uh, we have a platform like this. Can you all hear me? Yes, Julius, very clearly. Okay, very good. Just let me on standby. Okay. So, uh, multidimensional beings. Okay, now, we need, okay, I, I don't know how many of you followed the session yesterday. Uh, about full consciousness now is actually today's topic is full consciousness part two actually but uh, I didn't put that because uh, yesterday's session was quite intense so I think uh, I don't want to scare any one of you so if I say part two you might oh my god and some of you might not want to join now uh, because it's very intense yesterday. Yeah? Uh, it, is, it is almost uh, confrontational. And this is one of the things which we do in regression and in therapy. So you need to confront. Confront means face. You are facing something which you have been avoiding. Uh, maybe consciously or subconsciously, but still uh, we are not dealing with it. We are not seeing it as it is. That's why you need to face it. So when you face it, uh, initially you need courage. So that courage, uh, when you put together with face it, it becomes confrontational. So you confront, confront your fears, confront something which you have been avoiding for a long time. <clears throat> Of course, some of you don't see it as that yesterday. Eh? You don't feel it's confrontational. You feel that, you know, yeah, sometimes you even feel it's unnecessary. Well, I'm sorry. Eh? Unnecessary is actually an excuse. Nothing is unnecessary. You see it as it is. Don't judge it, don't brand it, don't comment. Even saying that it's unnecessary is a comment, it's a judgment. You have already put them in a box. But this box has limited storage. It can get full. And when it gets full, it can overflow and it can pop. <laughs> like a volcano, it can pop. 
you know, you're all peaceful and joyful and all of a sudden one day, just a small thing snapped you and you are like, what happened to me? I thought I was enlightened. Well, same thing happened to me, yeah. I was in the monastery and I was meditating 10 hours per day and I was uh, in bliss and I was uh, very happy and, uh, and I have nothing much to worry about and the only thing I have is just a rope. And this rope, I was washing it one day and uh, all of a sudden, the color came out. And I got so upset. You have no idea. I have I started blaming the skies and the earth. And I say, what? You can't even take care of my one rope. I've given up everything. Just one rope. God, what is this? Wow, oh, the, the volcano that comes out is crazy. Where did that come from? I'm in a hut, meditating, 10 hours, with no thoughts. Where did that come from? Yeah. So these are things which we need to uh, look into. Look all direction, not only one direction. Look all directions. Be like the sun radiating 360 degrees all around like a ball this is called love all serve all not partial eh? not like a, okay maybe 180 degrees upwards i love 180 degrees downwards no i don't love Love all, serve all, that's the instruction. And why does Swami give us such a difficult task? The simplest language, but the most difficult task of all is love all, serve all. Some of you might think, no, I have already reached love all, serve all, uh, you know. Okay, let's talk. We are multi-dimensional beings. <clears throat> Today, many of you experience. One side, you are on traveling in the cosmos, going to Akasha Records, downloading. Another side, you are going downstairs and firing your son. <laughs> Even Sister Vlaka, from start of the astral travel, she is having issues there. Physically, on the third dimension, she is dealing with the situation. Astrally, he's, she's traveling and she is not only traveling, she is directing the entire crew and the passengers to a place where there is extended beings and masters and talking to them and making sure everything is in detail and no one get lost and everyone is together while third dimension dealing with a situation. For me, There was once I was directing the craft and I was driving actually, <laughs> physically. Well, not only that, there's other times which even the, the crew have witnessed, uh, I was fighting a war in the astral realm. Uh. Okay, so this is our abilities. These are just one or two, two, two dimensions you're operating on. 
third dimension? Yes. In the office, I'm also there. I'm also people feeling me. People like, oh, if Julius come, uh, you know, we should do this. You know, this is the, actually uh, but Julius said this and that. You mentioned my name. You know, you know, somehow, somehow, you know, uh, our our uh, etheric being or even fifth dimensional being goes together with the name. When you see the name, the energy is there. Yeah, just like Swami. All of us, yes. When they mention your name, sometimes uh, you feel, Ayo, no, so painful. Or someone must be speaking about me. I'm sure you guys have uh, heard that before. Or you fall down and say, someone is talking bad about me. <laughs> How is it? Because for them, you are also a being, and when they talk to you, talk about you, there is an effect on you. In both ways, uh, even when they praise you and they love you and they send healing energies. So when they send healing energies, where are they sending to? They are sending to your fifth dimensional body and also third dimensional body. And I have many incidences where people told me that, you know, they have met me uh, in the dreams and also, you know, sometimes in meditation they have seen. Yes, those are my other bodies. And all of you have. So a dark background with a rectangular shape in gold color many times as it is. So who are we? Who, who are we? Who am I? I am God. So if you are God, you'll be having thousand heads, isn't it? Isn't that what God is? Vishwarupa? Thousand hands, million hands. Correct? This is Vishwarupa. Vishwarupa is God. You are God. So you are having so many hits and hands, actually, all of you. But we can't see it. Why? Because we are attached to one pair of eyes one pair of hands, one pair of legs, one body. We are so attached to it and, you know, we beautify it in every way we can and maintain it and think that is the only thing we have. So, when we do that... Sorry. When we do that, we lose our other connections. These connections, uh, I tell you, it's so important now, actually. It is uh, time. It is time all of us should uh, experience this. It's time for us to learn how to be aware of this is time for us because it is it helps a lot it helps yourself it helps the world it helps the consciousness collective consciousness it helps the galaxy actually when we wake up to this yeah um, so the first thing is, don't get attached, too much attached, too attached to your physical body, okay? Don't get too attached. Don't get too attached to your mind. Your mind is there, okay, fine. You know, it's to maintain the body and, uh, you know, to think of the larger self also. 
but not too attached. Too attached, you can't see your other uh, abilities, your other uh, dimensions. Okay? All right. So how do we do that? First, you need to be in the central sun. The central sun is the right place to be. The, the, uh, actually, I would say this is uh, totally uh, uh, the grace of God that we are able to talk about this so openly and actually to actually discuss and to encourage and to be uh, to have this access. We didn't have this access earlier. Yeah? No one talks about the central sun. Who talks about it? Now all of a sudden, so many people, downloaders, channelers, are talking about the central sun. Where did that come from? This came from the portal. The portal is open. It's opening. So as it opens, more and more can see and more and more can connect and experience, yeah? So uh, the central sun is, the, is a very good uh, space to, to, to experience yourself as multidimensional. Actually, it's the best place because if you see from any other spot, you are seeing part partiality only, you are seeing only from that, uh, from the point of view of uh, evolution, from the point of view of uh, um, not being the center. Okay, the center is within yourself. If you are strong enough, if you are strong enough to draw the center of the universe connection and resonance within yourself, by all means, you'll be able to see all around you. Okay, the central sun is none other than us. But, at this point in time, we need a reference point uh, because we are having a little situation here. Okay, it's time all of us realize this situation. Okay, I think this situation is a very good uh, uh, case study of uh, our point of evolution now, okay? Okay, what's the situation? All right, situation is like this. The central sun is actually us, okay? All of us is connected to the central sun and we are inseparable. Huh? This is something is is hot wired. Something that uh, you know you want to talk about antakara. That's that's the real antakarana. That's the one. The connection, un, unbreakable bond. Okay. How the central sun is is how you are. How you are is how the central sun is. There's no separation at all, okay? Now, what's the situation? All the while, the central sun, or the galactic core, has no light. It's called the sun, but there's no light coming up. There's only resonance, there's only intense uh, uh, energy that moves the entire universe. So you can imagine how powerful that energy is. Right? Very, uh, is the core of uh, the galaxy. Yeah? So this central sun has been uh, resonating and radiating in bliss without light. No light coming out. 
Not like our solar sun. Solar sun, the light is activated. That one is not activated. Of course, it has its own reason why it's like that. Of course, it's a beautiful reason why it's like that. It's because the play, the drama of uh, the unknown and the known and you know the shadow and the light and uh, this whole uh, creation was created with this background. Okay. Now, why? we are having access now because this is my own uh, interpretation uh, i don't know if you'll find it anywhere else but uh, this is what came to me this central sun is going to illuminate soon like the sun the light is going to crank and is going to spread okay so when the central sun enlightens you all of us are same all of us are hot wired to that place what will happen to us we will also illuminate okay full of light okay let's backtrack a bit huh? just backtrack a bit because i don't want to jump too fast before illumination how do you know you are connected to the central sun some of you have already reached it actually a lot actually most of you have reached it from yesterday's from the yesterday's session i have uh, from the feedback uh, i get most of you are already there that means you are already feeling the central sun inside you that feeling of love of unconditional love of oneness of joy of uh, peace that's the central sun. So, you are, when you say I am the central sun, or I am that I am, I am, you are already speaking from the central sun. Of course, you can say I'm speaking from the body also. It's a resonance, okay? Both is resonating the same thing. That's how you, you discover, uh, that's how you connect. Huh? That's, your, that's your higher self. So, all of you, since we are monad, we are all in already. In oneness with the central sun, okay? Now, when the central sun illuminates, all of you will illuminate and all of you will be in light, full of light. Okay. So, when you have light, there is two things will happen. One is, with this light, you see who you are, you see who others are as yourself, you see oneness, you see uh, the central sun in all. You see love, unconditional love. Okay? You see abundance, you see knowledge, you see wisdom, you see divinity. Okay? That's one side. The other side?
you freak out. Why? You start getting scared of seeing your past. Because light illuminates, okay? Light illuminates everything. It illuminates even your life. Your entire life will be illuminated. You will see light in your entire life. That's why yesterday I keep saying, eh? can you see your life as a play of consciousness and unconscious? Consciousness is the light actually. If you can see your life as a play of consciousness and unconscious, and you enjoy the play, enjoy the play. Then you have transcended many things. You have transcended emotions, you have transcended the whole drama, you have transcended who's right and wrong, who is good, who's bad, all you, you transcended. You don't, you, you are not stuck inside, you know where I'm good or I'm bad or he is good, he is bad or, or you know, these whole stories you won't get uh, stuck inside okay if you see it as a play of consciousness and unconscious you, you really enjoy it because you you can watch the whole movie in peace. Otherwise, you'll be stuck in chapter 2 for don't know how long. And you love that chapter so much and it can go on for 20 years. Watch the whole movie. Because the whole movie, you will really understand the depth of this play, this dance is so deep it's not the normal dance you know this is this is a dance of of god god's dance if you guys enjoy dances please watch this this dance will really uh, is incredible to, to watch this uh, unfoldment so One side is to see it and enjoy the drama, see it as an unfoldment, you see it as God manifesting right before you. The other side, hmm. I don't know if you can imagine how it's going to be. Eh? Okay, let's take it from another point of view. Okay, I, I will this. I think this uh, scenario will explain to you all better. You guys have heard about how people, what happens to people when they leave their body, right? I'm sure many of you have heard. Uh, when they leave the body, there's a tunnel and there's a tunnel of light, and you know you have to travel through the tunnel, and you know a lot of things gonna flash back before you. Uh, your childhood days and then maybe past life or maybe you know something you have done in this life and all these things going to be played out in a very fast pace then when these pictures are played out in a fast pace if you do not see it as a play of God what are the chances of you getting stuck in one of the scenes? What are the chances of you getting attached to any one of the scenes or the stories? Can you imagine? Now you're going towards light and then your life is flashed before you and you saw your childhood day in detail. In details which you, 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 
it's much more than your third dimensional experience huh? okay the details are not just what you see with your physical eyes you see it from different angles all around and the people whom you have blamed you all of a sudden found out that we are the guilty one what are the chances of us getting stuck there very high because emotions are involved and the flashes come there's this realization and that realization may, might might follow up with guilt that follow up with uh, uh, you know uh, apology or sadness or whatever that triggers so these stories are not to be underestimated uh, it's not something which you think it is if you are attached to the body or the mind chances of uh, us repeating the same story again is very high okay so now what to do start practicing now practice being god practice seeing from god's point of view start the, start practicing experiencing your multi dimensional self it's time okay all right so uh if i didn't cover anything along the way please stop me because i my train of thoughts can just go on i might have missed something which i said i'm going to explain but you know i somehow skipped it so if you have noticed anything please ask me otherwise there's no chance huh? i'll do it keep going only okay now multi dimensional self there are easy ones there are difficult ones easy one is um we connect to our idol our role model huh? role models are the easy ones huh? because we we consciously choose them and we enjoy their presence we enjoy their energy we we connect to them and we idolize them so much uh, that you know after a few years we look like them we talk like them and we actually you know can that be possible if you have no affinity no no being connection with that it's not possible you might think you are the one who chose the idol or role model but it's not it's chosen by energy you resonated you connected energetically to that person that's why you click in every level to a point where they are similar okay the same goes for pets yeah if you connected to a pet which you love so much and you know when the pet sneezes you know exactly what's happening and after a while you know i'm sure you have seen a lot of pictures where you know the owner and the pet look the same what happened there multi dimensional being happening you manifested as a pet and also the owner and also your role model and the list goes on also as your brother you look as your brother look the same or your father look the same even talk the same identical are they separate from you no way 
impossible to separate them. Because energetically, even DNA has that connection. So that connection, if you talk about our DNA uh, increasing the strengths, the more it increases, the more you're going to see yourself as multi-dimensional. Hmm? You're connected, all connected. Now all of a sudden we have cosmic cousins. <laughs> Our dear brother Saha introduced. These are your cosmic cousins, benevolent ones. Luckily, he introduced those. Now. <laughs> so, we are receiving a lot of information from them. And I can tell you, they are so loving. Their level of unconditional love is much higher. They are, they are concerned about us like a mother, actually. They are constantly sending messages, guidance, and telling, you know, showering so much light and you know, moving. It's like a daily affair, you know, now. It's not the last time it used to be, you know, maybe a few months once download, a big one. Now it's every day or every other day, big downloads. And these are very clear instructions, sir. Huh? It's according to the unfoldment of the earth. Governmental level, ministry level, corporate level, uh, relationship level, your own level. It is so detailed, you know, with that kind of uh, uh, information coming down every day. You can imagine their love. So now, that's our cousins. This is first step. Next step, they are our friends. Next step, we are one. So, is it separate from us? No. We are all connected. If we ask them now, okay, you can ask them actually, yeah? they will respond, they will send message to you directly. <laughs> Try it. You can ask them. Um, what it came to me just now. Okay, maybe you're not supposed to ask that. <laughs> I got stopped. <laughs> Okay, now, so uh, multidimensional in many levels, okay, we are uh, operating right now in parallel universes, uh, parallel dimensions, uh, we, and, and all of this uh, multi your multidimensional self contributes to your welfare now. Understand that every of your multi dimensional self all over is contributing to your energy and welfare now. How they are is how you are, how you are is how others are. So it's all linked. You yourself is monet. And if you get enlightened, what happens? Entire monad get enlightened. Your entire multi-dimensional self group get enlightened. This is 14 generations up, 14 generations down, sideways, all around. All get enlightened. Okay? So it's beautiful time. We have amazing opportunities, openings. These are called openings. Now the lion portal is opening. 
iron portal is big, is lion. Okay, why is it called lion? Because it's, you can imagine how a lion is. A lion roars. When the lion comes, it's the king of the jungle. King of the portals. When, when the lion roars, it shakes the other portals. It has that kind of resonance. It's a big portal. Um, let's make full use of it. It's given to us. Let's uh, roar together with the lion. Why not? Lion is also us. That's also our multi-dimensional body, one of it, the big one. So we are traveling together with the lion. Well, uh, I'm okay with lions because I've been traveling with dragons before. I've, I've ride in dragon a few times and I told my friends. <laughs> Some believe me, some don't believe me, some think I'm gone, but it uh, doesn't matter. I'm supposed to learn how to say it as it is. This is what I've been uh, groomed to practice because uh, thought, word, and deed. Omito. What you think, you say. What you say, you feel. You feel, say, think, say, all one line. Then the energy can move. The energy comes, it just comes. It will keep coming and you just keep uh, saying it as it is. Okay, this saying as it is uh, is really uh, something which uh, is not, not uh, uh, something that comes naturally. It is something we need to practice. Uh, because uh, if you say as it is, it's... Uh, you need to be a warrior to do that because you are not, you, you are facing everything as it is. And not doing no comments, no judgment, no sugarcoating, no separating, no competing, no analyzing, uh, no analyzing, uh, this is the part. <laughs> no comments. You're saying as it is. Hmm? This is something which we need to uh, practice more and more. Yeah. Don't avoid. Don't say it's unnecessary. <laughs> okay. Multi-dimensional beings. All of you have already been practicing it uh, consciously or subconsciously. You, you are already doing it, okay? For example, say now I am, uh, I am uh, cooking and I need to think of where, what to buy, okay? And I also think of uh, what my auntie told me yesterday. And also I'm thinking, you know, one week ago, uh, my mother-in-law scolded me. And I'm so angry about it. And I think that it's not right. And he should be doing it. But this is what he's been doing. And this one, and this whole drama is going on while you're cooking. Okay. Now that's unconscious, multidimensional. You are there. You are one week ago in your auntie's house, physically. And you are cooking here. Your energy is at your auntie's house, engaging in this drama. And you're getting upset here while you are cooking. And that upset energy has gone into the food. And that food is being eaten by your son. And your son got upset. Where did all this come from? You're just cooking, right? 
how come your cooking story now manifesting as energy in your food? Unless you are multidimensional, you are able to draw energy from that space and manifest it here. There is also others, yeah. Healers does this, and right? healers, oh my God, you know, this assess consciousness. He's cooking here. That side, he's releasing energies of the one country on the spot. And another side, he is healing someone who is bedridden. Another side. Is repairing the car. <laughs> this is what you call fast processes. Your processor is very fast. It's running, okay, and a lot of uh, uh, you're dealing with a lot of issues uh, in multiple levels. This is multidimensional functioning in uh, in healing, in loving. And all of you can do that. You just need to be first consciousness. You have to be consciousness. How can, if you are not consciousness, how can you do this? You are doing it unconsciously. Unconsciously, you have been doing it for the longest time. And it's, it is stuck with the same whole, uh, you know, body. You are not really multi-dimensional. I mean, you are... You know, it's a. Uh, you need to expand, okay? Expand your coverage, expand your consciousness, okay? So you stay in consciousness, be in consciousness, operate from consciousness, okay? From consciousness, from the central sun, from your core being. You see your multi-dimensional self. Seeing is enough. Actually, I tell you, uh, you don't even need to do anything. You don't need to heal also. Because watching the story itself is it's the most healing part. It, it will heal you, actually. Wow. You should start a multi-dimensional healing therapy. <laughs> this is what being downloaded. Today we went to Akasha Records. Eh? I don't know what I downloaded, but it was just going in. So much energy is moving in. Eh? It's incredible. I, I'm not surprised that actually this entire topic now is because of that download. Yeah. So, Learn to watch, watching, observing, uh, witnessing as it is itself is an incredible therapy for ourselves. You will heal us in all dimensions because you're observing, you are not judging, you are not interpreting, you are watching as it is. So when you see as it is, you will start seeing the entire story of this body of yours, the next body of yours, the past body of yours, the future body of yours, the cosmic body of yours, you will see. This is consciousness. What do you think Buddha did after he got enlightened? Did he straight away come out and preach? No, he didn't. When he got enlightened, he was sitting there for, I don't know how many days. What was he doing? He's watching the story. He's enjoying the story. And after watching for so many days, he said, finally, I saw my future. 
and whatever that happens after that is purely the manifestation of what he saw. He's not even doing anything. He's just flowing. That's why we put Buddha on the lotus and it's drifted in water, it's floating, it's just flowing, it's just flowing and you know, everything unfolds by itself. That's why they say when Buddha walks, flower blooms. It's true. It's so natural. It's like, it's like a flower, you know. So there's no, it's just pure manifestation. So, uh, and all of you can do that. <laughs> wow, what an age you are living in. I've heard this before, like uh, 30 years ago, I you know, where uh, gurus or some sages say, you know, the golden age it will be a time where many people will be enlightened. It's like many Buddhas on the earth. And I used to think, wow, what a great time. All so many Buddhas, enlightened beings around the earth. I didn't know that uh, we'll be one of them. It's a blossoming. It's happening. Yeah. Okay, so now you are blossoming, okay? You are in light and you are enlightened and you know, you are enlightening the whole monad and all is beautiful, huh? all are beautiful. What about those who went into hiding? Getting scared with the light, exposing them. Oh my God, everyone's gonna see me. All the, all the things that I've been hiding is now getting exposed. I have to defend. <laughs> Next, offense. Oh, the guns comes out already. Attack, the bomb. What happened to them? they will fall into deep maya. Of defending, offending, reacting, fearing, hiding, competing. So there's only two directions. One is up, one is down. So that's why we have this picture of two Earths splitting up. Third dimension is going one side, fifth dimension is going one side. I'm trying to make you all see things as it is. Because um, if you see things as it is, you no longer react. Yeah. And uh, the things that's going to surface, it's like going through the tunnel when you're going towards the light. That tunnel is going to uh, it's like a hologram. You're going to enter into a, a, a fast hologram. Now we are in the hologram, but this is a slow hologram. Very slow one. But once you leave the body, I'm not saying you're going to leave the body. I'm saying energetically. You know, I'm trying to make a comparison here so that you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, because once the flashes comes, when the light comes, it's like that. It has that kind of intensity where you see your life. 
you can see your entire life in details, even to the your mother's womb, what happened while you're in your mother's womb, the conversations that's going on, the emotions your mother go through, what impact it has on you, all you can see. So in those moments, if you are chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Congratulations. If you are chanting any mantra, Om Bhupa Swata Chavitur Vadena, Om Bhagavad Deva Sri Mahi, Congratulations. Why? You are holding on to the lifeline of God. You will watch this entire energy. You will watch it. You will pass the whole thing. And those are the times uh, your Hare Krishna or whatever mantra you chant, it will not be how you're chanting now. How you chant now, Maybe there's a level of intensity in it, yeah? but at that time when you chant, it can, it can literally bring Krishna or Sai Baba, Swami or Allah. You call and he's there. It manifests immediately. But then again, huh? Even when they manifest, you know how I can literally show you, let's say, okay, Jesus is beside me. Jesus manifests now, I call upon Christ to help me, you know, I have this, uh, now I'm in this uh, tunnel, uh, Christ please help me. Christ manifests, Christ holding your hand. And while you're traveling, You'll be like, hey, isn't that my my ex-boyfriend? Oh, I love that. But he, she did this, this boyfriend, you know, he cheated on me. I'm so angry with him. I should have, oh my God, I can see it now. I saw who is the girlfriend. Girlfriend is my friend. Is that the truth? Let me find out. Depends on your grip. I don't know how strong is your grip. Jesus can hold on to you. But if you are swinging away and you say you want to find out, I don't know how is it. There might be a battle. Yeah? Maybe Christ might, Jesus might start fighting with you. That's the best thing to do actually at that time. He will fight with you. Hey, come over here. Stop looking there and you start arguing with him. Why cannot? This is the stupid, stupid fellow who took away my, my boyfriend. So you start arguing. At least when you're arguing, you're looking at him, right? Sometimes Swami does that. Huh? I'm sure a lot of you experience, you know, when you're angry, instead of being angry with that person, you start being angry with God. That's also good. At least you're looking at God. So God can still got chance to talk to you. So you facing God and you, when you're facing God, you can travel with God. You are still holding on. So for God, there's no, you know, you criticize me or you, you, you like me or you love me is all the same because you, you're looking at me and that's what I want. Because I, when you look at me, I look at you. When you look at me, I look at you, I can bring you to where it's a safe place. It's a, where you can discover who you are. You know, that's God's intention. God's intention is always your highest good, for your highest good, for you to realize who you are, for you to discover your own sovereignty your own divinity. Yeah. 
And at, in those moments, when you discover your own divinity, you will also realize that you are also one of God's bodies. That's what you realize. Because you are already in, discover your divinity. You're already saying, I'm God. So when you keep saying, I'm God, you, it's a matter of time before you experience being God. What is being God? God is love all serve all. Like the sun, 360 degrees, seeing all as it is and still loving. No judgment. Okay, I hope uh, you all are able to understand and feel and see what I'm saying. Uh, please, if you all have any questions or comments, please do it now. Saira. Any comments, any questions? This has been beautiful, powerful, enlightening session. You are very, you are very, thank you, thank you. I know some of you are also doing something else at the same time. Don't worry, you are fine because you are multi-dimensional beings. You are supposed to do that. You can continue doing your work and yet be here with us. <laughs> and you enlighten me on the black background with a gold kind of door. Uh, I think there was something before that. Yesterday, when my eyes were closed, saw a dark background with a rectangular shape in golden color. Many times I see this dark background with a rectangular shape in gold color. How to enter into non-attachment state and be a witness of central sun? Okay. Now, uh, um, with regard to the black background with the gold kind of door, you just have to remember it, okay? Maybe that's an indication. Doors are usually uh, uh, entering into dimensions. Uh, These doors, you uh, just have to remember it. That's all. You don't have to interpret it. You don't have to try to find out what it is. The best way to find out what it is, is to enter the door. No point talking about it. You enter, then you see yourself. And why do I tell all of you this now? Because I believe all of you are already established in consciousness. You might not see it, just like how the central sun is, there's no light coming out, but energetically you're already there. Yeah, this unconditional love, full of uh, joy inside, bliss, peace. And these are all feelings for you at this point in time. And I can understand why it was only feelings, you're not seeing it yet because the central sun itself is not illuminated yet. So when it illuminates you will also illuminate this together you guys are moving all of us are moving together okay how 
to enter into a non-attachment state and be a witness with the central sun. Very good. Non-attachment. Okay. In order to have non-attachment to something, you need to have attachment to another thing first. Of course, in our ascension path, it will be something higher. Okay. So if you want to uh, be not attached to a lower energy, you should be attached to a high energy. Okay. So once you're attached to a high energy, you can pull yourself out of the lower energy. This is how it works. Right. So uh, how do you enter into non-attachment state? I assume is of non-attachment of the lower energies and be a witness with the central sun. Yes, so the central sun is the key. You need to be attached to the central sun. Central sun is a very good uh, uh, I don't know what you call that. Very good direction to look at because uh, central sun uh, is the safest actually. You won't go wrong with central sun. Okay? So you need to attach to the central sun first. Attach consciously. Actually, all of you are already attached, but you are just not conscious about it. Now, you, you become conscious that you are attached to the central sun. Okay? So once you are attached to the central sun, and you are one with the central sun and you look at everything else chances of you not being attached is much higher okay much higher because you're attached to the central sun but as always movies being movies some of the movies are very exciting and you like to watch it and you like to uh, identify yourself to it uh, that's when the attachment towards the movie comes huh? so at, in, as far as attachment to the movie the roles uh, this is the best way huh, to handle it the best way to do this is to see the entire movie as the play of consciousness and unconscious. See it as that, as it is. Or even you can, you can see it as the Leelas of God, the stories of God. Brother Julius, I have a, a bit of, con I mean, a lot of confusion, not a bit of confusion. Oh, very good. Then we can have a lot of questions here. Yeah, not a lot. One or two is good enough. Um, okay. Uh, so my main question is, um, concentrate on the central sun, and that is duality again, and uh, become one with the sun. Okay, oneness. Then I am watching from there again everything else non-judgmentally and detachedly. That is again duality again. When I am one with everything, why am I watching anything outside me? Hmm. Okay. I assume that you have found oneness. I assume that you have found non-duality. Okay. Uh, I assume that you are already meditating in oneness for a long time. You are operating in oneness. You have no issues with anybody, no issues with any situations. You are at peace with yourself. You are showering unconditional love to whoever that comes into your space. You see yourself. You see God. If you have reached that stage, then you don't need this process. This process is only uh, workable, uh, helpful 
if you have issues reaching oneness. So that means, let me clarify this if I understand right. So we are far, far from uh, oneness. We are in the duality, which is also not that. It's a path uh, taking us to the oneness, uh, to reach that oneness or to understand the oneness. Um, there is a possibility of me having uh, pockets of duality while pockets of oneness and again, pockets of duality also. Uh, that is a possibility. It is not a constant state yet to be in oneness. The, I am a mixture of duality and oneness. Am I right? Okay, very good. Now, why, why are you having such a situation as sometimes you have oneness and sometimes you don't? Because this oneness which you are uh, trying to be in is just is still not manifested full. It is still uh, some kind sometimes a, just a theory. You are still using the mind. This oneness is not a mind job. It's an experience right now. It's a resonance. It's it's a radiation. It's not the uh, knowledge. It's not. It is knowledge, but it's not uh, uh, something which you just study with the mind and and not do it. Not something that one can explain. Only can be experienced. Am I correct? You have to be. Be. Yeah. yeah. Just be. That is. Yeah. You have. You go through it. That's all. There is nothing that you can explain about it. You just be in that. That's it. Yeah, be in that as long as possible. Yeah, so that's what I am. Uh, my question is, there is a possibility of a few moments or few seconds to be in that, but then quickly you are out again, and there is a possibility of being there and coming out of it also. So that's what is my observation. That's why my question of the clarity. Thank you. Yes, good, good. So you can actually... Sometimes you feel oneness, you feel very good, you go to nature, you feel one and you know, and then you come out and you go and buy something and all of a sudden someone uh, stepped on your toe. Toe is okay, la. sometimes someone suddenly knocked your head with a helmet. <laughs> and if you can still stay in oneness at that point, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm telling you, uh, when you're in oneness, doesn't mean you're not going to be tested. Tests will naturally come. And these are not tests which is uh, simply done on you. Uh, these are tests that comes back to you because of past. Yeah? For example, someone stepped on your toe and you hate people who steps on your toe. <laughs> And you have that tendency, you know, everything else you can do. You can even take away my house, but don't step on my toes. <laughs> no, my, my confusion is not that. My, my way, I'm, I don't know, maybe could be right or wrong. Mine is more on to thought, word and deed. Um, that, uh, that, that's what is my concentration more on and more on consciously separating the person from the problem. If I have some situation that need to be taken care and separating it, I have nothing against the person. That particular action need to be done something differently for everybody else. The situation need to be corrected. And yeah. that whatever the reaction coming back for me, absolutely I am actually fine with the reaction also, but I need it to address it. That is where my confusion comes. Wow. Such clarity. Eh? Thank you so much for sharing that. Eh? And, I, and, and I wasn't talking about you about being, you know, stepped on the toes. <laughs> I'm just giving an example of how triggers can happen. There are triggers waiting. Yeah. Um, so the chances of us coming out of that experience of oneness is there. 
is there waiting for us every time. So in our our life is actually in a way uh, a battle, if you like. Yeah, there's a battle going on internally uh, of oneness and 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 duality and oneness and duality. But this is a very healthy battle. This is a very beautiful battle because at least you are battling between Dvaita and Advaita. You are already at the door. Yeah? I feel not even Dvaita. I feel uh, Visistha Dvaita. Huh? I feel Visistha Dvaita, not the Dvaita. Okay. Advaita. Um, uh, no, no, Visistha Advaita. Um, what I mean is uh, not the state where I am a devotee and uh, there is a Swami, the duality. But I feel more like, yes, I am part of Swami, very much, very much of Swami. I am from Swami. I have a lot of Swami in me. But I am still seeing him as a Swami and I am part of him. It's uh, that is not completely separated. That's what I am meaning. That okay, very good. Huh? You have that goal in mind, and uh, if you have that kind of uh, awareness and concentration and uh, experience of being one with Swami constantly, uh, it's beautiful. Uh, then uh, you're already one. Uh, then there's no uh, need for any other. Uh, passages. There's no need for any other processes because you're already one. Yeah. Uh, brother, it's not about the messages. I'm so sorry to take this time. Um, I, I just need this kind of clarity sometimes when I can get confused because uh, my personal approach is I am riding with Swami and he is driving my car. Uh, yes, the he is driving and maybe he will go and hit a car, hit, a, hit something, or he got a flat tire, or he is driving very roughly. Swami is known to be a very rash driver when he was young. And I'm having all these ups and downs, but I am riding with him. That is my concept. Okay, let these things happen. As long as my Swami is right there and he is the one who is driving me, I have no issues, is my thing. Is it wrong or right? I don't know. Beautiful. Sister Sandhya? Sairam, yes. <laughs> I just wanted to see if I can share what I think with Sister Jayshree. Awesome Definitely. thinking. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Julius. <laughs> I was typing up my notes, multitasking, like you say. I was trying to type up my patient notes and I'm hearing your... Uh, uh, sharing and then Sister J. Shree's and I felt so perhaps I could share direction. what I think. <laughs> yeah, so Sister J. Uh, from what I understand, from what you are saying, and here is my thinking. Uh, 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 I think I understand what you mean by Vishishta Advaita. It's the next step to Advaita. That's the step, intermediate step from Dvaita. That's like a bridge between Dvaita and Advaita. I understand what you mean. You're saying you feel you have several traits of Swami, but you are not Swami yet. Is that correct? Exactly, sister. Yes, sometimes yes, I yes. That, but sometimes I'm not that. Yes, yes. And that is fine because that's the next step. The, if the first step of the Dvaita was where we, feel, we see I'm separate, God is separate. And then the next stage in the progression, the spiritual journey is where you see that it's almost like Christ saying, I'm the son of God, right? What does he say? He, he says, I've been sent by God. Then he says, I'm the son of God. And finally, towards the end, he says, I am God. So you are on that pathway. You will feel that. And therefore, you're feeling that, you know, sometimes you are able to identify yourself as the central son. You are, you, you are, you are the central son. And then there are times when you're feeling separate and you're, looking out at other people that is when you are sensing or experiencing the separateness or the duality yes i agree with you when you said am i going in and out of um, um oneness and duality yes yes that is true and this is all part of the progression that's all part of ascension and at some point you will constantly be in that state of oneness 
and that will be when you are in samadhi constantly you will be in that state of oneness all the time but until that happens we move in and out of oneness and duality and whenever we catch ourselves in duality brother julius is saying remind yourself that you are the central sun that is yes. what he's trying to say yeah yeah yes i i do understand i don't want to gobble everybody's time no 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 this is important please yeah please so anything for, for, we can do to understand will be good what uh, what confuses me the most is people often talk about fear i mm. i uh, it boggles me i don't have fear why don't i have fear i if anything happens i i think of the extremes doesn't bother me doesn't that fear doesn't come into me i i have this uh, i don't know how to say that uh, this profound feeling of swami overwhelming me where is the fear comes for me that is a good thing fear. that is actually a good thing i am i feel like a strange alien when i think about it no. it, it is funny that why am i not feeling any fear well they don't feel that way because that is a lesson you have learned in many life lifetimes and i have gone through it too i have done crazy things without even thinking of consequences and i know that swami has always been with me maybe i'll share those stories one day but sister i think each time we come into this earth we have a new lesson to learn for some people it is overcoming fear for some people it's overcoming attachment so for each person it is different and if you do not have fear that's a very very good thing actually don't sister, make yourself go it yeah actually what happened was exactly the year 2011 my husband and i was traveling to buffalo suddenly the next morning we are supposed to go to canada boom uh, my husband fell and his cardiac arrest and um, literally everything stopped and uh, the emt team was called but he is in my hands i can see that everything is over and uh, my husband is not a sai devotee or anything um i just called that friend who was our house where bring me vibhuti then very strangely i had no fear in me and i am just watching as a witness when they revived my husband and put him in a hypothermia protocol and the cardiologist themselves that it's a divine intervention but before that all i asked the swami's picture there is swami i don't know what's happening but you know what to be done and i trust whatever is the consequence that you do and just use me as your instrument swami and i went and sat in the ambulance with him and touch wood my my husband is perfectly fine now back to normal after all this things and uh, the text streams went through but very strangely i wasn't crying i was not scared i was not worried whatever may be the consequences see this is when i realized oh my god what's wrong with me <laughs> nothing is wrong with you you know what perhaps this is these instances are were meant as a test to you to see if you are still fearless or it was per perhaps meant as um as an incidents that other people can learn from it could be one of two things but please please don't go go back to that stage where you bring in fear you have already passed the test that test is long done oh fear is not there when he is there i have yes, no fear exactly. but exactly I no no don't feel abnormal i don't want you to feel that you're abnormal or like oh thank alien. you that's a that's a really <laughs> reassurance i get confused those things sometimes thank you so much and i'm so sorry to everybody for taking this time no i think you inspired people and remember it is not at all abnormal it the is not me, at I all abnormal to, i need to ask these questions to move on otherwise i'm stuck here and i can't deal with it i need to deal with everything that comes to my mind so that yes. needs to be out of the system so that i can continue my life that's that's how i am correct correct well that is ex ex very good thank you for sharing that and thank you uh, sister and thank you brother thank you very much for this thank you thank you brother julius i'm sorry i interrupted and uh, thank you for letting me oh, no, share what i think yes no worries okay now um 
it is good that you can see you know swami is in your life you are focus on swami and swami is loving you taking you by the hand yeah and uh, along the way swami also tells you that you know uh, there's no difference between me and you i'm also inside you and uh, you are also inside me you know we are one and along the way also he tells that you know uh, i'm also in all the other people you can actually see it if you like if you see me within yourself you can actually see me in others also and uh, you look around and actually you start waking up you start realizing that it's true and you start seeing him operating through everyone in this world you start seeing him in the sky you start seeing him in the cosmos you start seeing him in ectorians this is called the great awakening it's no more separation the oneness that's real oneness that is called god consciousness yeah so you are in god consciousness you realize that he is everywhere all around manifested you are literally looking at the visual rupa that is no separation that one is oneness these experiences are all waiting for us that's why we need to be introduced to being multidimensional beings now at least in concept we know this so when it happens we don't freak out when the light comes and all of a sudden you see you don't start panicking and and oh my god the person who my fight half my life is me the person whom i hate to see so much is actually me so at that point in time what do you do do i the old habit of how to deal with that part of you kick in is it triggered if it's not triggered very good you have passed uh, but, but, the test i have a question there so everything is if i visualize myself as a body and my right hand needs surgery so do i control it no i should go through the surgery for my right hand for my own benefit isn't it yeah it is a part of me that doesn't oh this is my right hand i don't want it to be operated that doesn't make any sense to me at some times i need that operation for that right hand that is where my confusion comes see yeah uh, i i i think what you are doing is you are using a lot of mind here i am not talking about mind i'm talking about experience i'm talking about being be if you use your mind to study it it's uh, encyclopedia you can write thesis over thesis on this but you have to be the subject you have to be it when you being it then you then you see yeah you will unfold before you yeah you will see the unfoldment okay now time for ati para shakti is an amazing group divine feminine rising and this divine feminine rising is actual rising it's all within us is rising yeah so it's manifested as the next station as uh, chanting as singing as uh, uh, expounding sharing so we like to uh end the session now thank you so much for your participation om sai
Thank you, Brother Julius. Yeah. And, uh, Mr. Thank Pangea. you, Brother Julius. Saira. Thank, Thank you, you. Saira. Brother Julius. Saira. Thank you. Sairam. Sairam, thank you. Sairam, thank you. Um, welcome to the audience.